Right, so I usually start these videos off by saying welcome into another Fallout 76 video. Show the weapon that we're going to be testing, but I'm just going to get right into it. So no intro, just straight into it. So here it is, the Flamer. Probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite weapon in all of Fallout 76. And as you're probably aware, if you use one of these things, the weapon itself doesn't really work how it used to work when you had a particular nozzle attached. And today, I'm going to see if it's still viable. But there's one thing I'm sure a lot of you who use this weapon felt like saying, or probably did did say when you woke up that fateful day and logged in to realize that it had been changed and that was what the fu- Okay, I've cooled off now. Everything's good. Now, where were we? Ah yes, the Flamer. Quite simply, one of the best weapons in the game. Or should I say, was one of the best weapons in the game. And to be honest, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't manage to make a video on it back when this thing was top tier. I mean, we all know if you use a Flamer what mods I'm talking about, and if you had the right rolls like anti-armor or bloodied, you could melt the face off of everything that stood in your way. From a distance so far, you could be standing in Boston in Fallout 4 and melt the face off of the Scorch Beast Queen in Fallout 76. It was incredible. But a few months back, Bethesda made one change that no longer made this weapon outshine a lot of other weapons, and that change was to do with the vaporization nozzle. The vaporization nozzle, compared to all the other nozzles you could attach to the Flamer, gave you and still does to this day the highest DPS you can get out of it. And as we mentioned, the range you could get in this thing was immense. But in order to do this, and you'll all probably remember, was that you had to each time when you logged in, switch the barrel from long to standard and then back to long again. But a few months back, Bethesda actually fixed this problem with the barrels and on paper, yes, it works how it's intended, but the vaporization nozzle basically gives it no range. So, today we're going to see, considering that the standard nozzle gives you the most range now, can this weapon still be the devil's butt crack it once was? So, let's check out the mods. With the mods and with the setup I have here today and after quite a lot of testing, I've put together what I feel is one of the best setups to get the most amount of range and also damage out of the Flamer. Firstly, we have the Napalm tank for superior damage, the Long Barrel for improved range, the huge propellant tank for exceptional ammo capacity, the standard nozzle because as we discussed, the vaporization nozzle, even though it will increase the damage by roughly 73, the standard barrel will give you the furthest range. However, if you prefer to use the vaporization nozzle, you can still use use it. However, you will need to be as close where you'd basically need to be breathing on the eyelids of an enemy for any damage to kick in. Now, the compression nozzle is somewhat the best of both worlds, but your range is cut in half compared to the standard nozzle. But don't worry, we'll be able to make up some of that damage back up with the build and some help from our good old friend, the Bobbleheads. And the rolls we have at the Flamer is the anti-armor effect with plus 25% faster fire rate. Now, I originally picked this up as a reward way back when, so I've had this for a very long time. But if you can roll a 3-star variant, I would definitely recommend looking out for either an anti-armor or bloodied variant. And having that 25% faster fire rate will definitely help out in a big way. Now, on to the build and the perks. With the perks, and similar to my other heavy gunner builds, we've gone with a low health power armor setup. And one of the main reasons we've done this is so that we can both utilize max rank of all of the Heavy Gunner perk cards, which will increase the damage by plus 60%, and also this card stabilized so that while in power armor, Heavy Guns gain excellent accuracy and ignore 45% armor. And as you can probably tell already with the anti-armor effect we already have, this thing is still going to be a beast of a weapon. We also have max rank of Nerd Rage equipped because, as we mentioned, we're going with a low health power armor build. But other than that, to try and get the most range and also damage out of the weapon, I would recommend popping on some of the perks like max rank of Glow Sight. So so you deal plus 60% damage to glowing enemies. Again, optional, but really handy if you come across glowing enemies. Max rank of suppressor, so you can reduce your target's damage output by 30% for 2 seconds after you attack. Max rank of tenderizer, so you make your target receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. I've mentioned this before and always recommended, always have max rank of adrenaline on, so you can boost that damage up to 60%. And lastly, max rank of bloody mess for 15% bonus damage. The rest of the build is mainly made up of damage resistance and mid 
navigation perks. But one card I would recommend popping on is Curator, so that bobbleheads and magazines last twice as long. And as I mentioned earlier, I'd recommend looking out for the big guns bobblehead, because with this equipped, and as you can see, it will increase the damage on the flamer by another 20%. And I know this might seem like a weird one, but it does boost up the damage by another 10%, which is the Guns and Bullets 7 magazine. And with those together, you'll be doing a base damage of 176 with the flamer, and that works out in comparison to the vaporization nozzle's base damage, a difference of roughly 57 damage. So still pretty incredible, but again, not the same as the good old days. With the legendary perks, we have max rank of legendary luck, max rank of power sprinter, max rank of far flung fireworks, max rank of legendary strength and agility, and max rank of power armor reboot. And with your legendary cards equipped, this is what your special stats will look like. So if you'd like to pause the video here, you can go ahead and do so. And the armor we're also running with today's showcase is a full set of Hellcats power armor with various auto stim and bolstering effects. Now that we've covered your special stats, the build, and also the mods for the weapon, let's go and see if this weapon still feels like the good old days. And before we wrap things up for today, I want to give a special mention to an incredible charity initiative we're supporting during the month of May. This month, we're going to be working in association with Fallout for Hope in support of Wes Johnson's Alzheimer's Association charity campaign. The Alzheimer's Association leads the way to end Alzheimer's and all other dementia by accelerating global research, driving risk reduction and early detection, and also maximizing quality care and support. During this month, myself and many others will be actively campaigning and raising funds for this incredible charity. And we're calling on others who would like to take part and help raise funds by heading over and signing up at falloutforhope.com forward slash join. Whether you stream, create content in other ways, your support will go a very long way. So if you'd like to take part, I'll leave a link in a pinned comment below. If you'd also like to donate and help our efforts, you can head over to my Tiltify donation link and donate as much as you'd like to. And again, a link will be made available below. My own personal goal and one I'd love to reach during our efforts is $1,000, but whatever we can reach as a community will be greatly appreciated and will go a very long way in helping the lives. And there you have it, the Flamer. I have to say, this weapon is still an absolute beast, even with the change that was made a few months back, but hopefully someday the vaporization nozzle will be fixed, and hopefully we will return to the fun days of using Flamers, but hopefully with today's video you'll be able to capture some of that fun again. Let me know below in the comments what you thought about today's showcase, and also the Flamer itself. And if you want to be kept up to date with everything Fallout related, consider clicking that subscribe button 
button and turning on that bell notification button. And if you enjoyed today's video, consider dropping a like. And before we head on out, I want to say a big thank you to our channel members for your continued support and dedication to the channel. And of course, to all of our subscribers who've helped the channel to grow. If you're also looking at picking up some Bethesda theme items over on the Bethesda store, you can use my creator code BTPINEAPPLE054 to receive 20% off of your purchases at checkout. And if you'd like to support the channel a little bit more personally, consider checking out my merch store, which has an array of t-shirts, mugs, prints, and other pineapple themed merch, which I'll leave in a link in the description of this video. And lastly, to you, the viewer, the person who stumbled upon this video, thank you for being here, and I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, Vault Dwellers, stay safe out there in the wasteland, welcome to Vault 93, and I'll catch you all in the next video.